Welcome to WARN, today we discuss India's supersonic missile that terrifies China, BrahMos. The BrahMos isn't just an anti-shipping weapon it also can hit ground-based targets, and is ideal for precision attacks against fixed installations such as radars, command centers, air bases and enemy missile batteries. It can also potentially carry a 660-pound nuclear warhead, though that doesn't appear to be its primary intended use. There are quite a few variants of the BrahMos missile designed to be used by the different platforms of the Indian military against either land or naval targets. The Indian Navy's BrahMos missiles mostly use 8-cell vertical launch system launchers. Six of its frigates and two destroyers have a single BrahMos launcher, while three of its destroyers have twin launchers. More BrahMos-equipped ships are under construction. The Navy has also successfully tested in 2013 a submarine-launched version which is expected to enter service in future vessels. Submarine-launched BrahMos could potentially be launched fairly close to the target without being detected. While many of us remain mesmerized by the unfolding shambles in the Middle East, the world's two most populous countries have gotten into a tiff over missiles. And I'm not referring to the ballistic kind for once. India deploying supersonic missiles on the border has exceeded its own needs for self-defense and poses a serious threat to China's Tibet and Yunnan provinces, complain the People's Liberation Army daily. The deployment of BrahMos missile is bound to increase the competition and antagonism in the China-India relations and will have a negative impact on the stability of the region. Our threat perceptions and security concerns are our own, and how we address these by deploying assets on our territory should be no one else's concern, an Indian military source sniffed in response. We'll first look at the BrahMos's capabilities and why they are considered a big deal, then plunge into why their deployment and export by is perceived as such a threat by China. Indeed, the BrahMos cruise missile is stealthy, fast and extremely difficult to shoot down. It also has become a point of contention in a complicated web of overlapping alliances between India, China, Russia and potentially Vietnam. Supersonic Carrier Killers BrahMos began in the 1990s as a joint project between Russia and India to develop an Indian version of the P-800 Onyx cruise missile. The missile's name is a portmanteau of the rivers Brahmaputra and Moskva in India and Russia, respectively. Cruise missiles are designed to be fired at long ranges from their targets so as not to expose the launching platform to enemy retaliation. The quintessential cruise missile is the Tomahawk, developed in the United States. Fired by ships and aircraft, the two, 900, pound missile can cruise up to 1,000 miles, depending on the model, at a speed of 500 miles per hour roughly the speed of a typical airliner before slamming into its target. During the Cold War, Russia developed a different style of cruise missile designed to take out American aircraft carriers. These flew over the speed of sound to better evade the carrier's defenses which include air-to-air -air missiles fired by fighters, surface-to-air missiles and Gatling cannon close-in weapon systems, or CIWS. They were also larger to increase the likelihood of achieving a kill in one hit. Ramjets were used to maintain high speeds over long distances. A ramjet uses incoming air at high speeds to achieve compression instead of using a compressor, saving on fuel. However, a ramjet needs a boost from another source to help it achieve that airflow in the first place. In the case of the BrahMos, a rocket provides the initial acceleration before the ramjet takes over. The BrahMos is actually slightly faster at Mach 2.8 than the P-800. It also weighs twice as much as a Tomahawk, at 6,000 pounds. The combination of twice the weight and four times greater speed as a tomahawk result in vastly more kinetic energy when striking the target. Despite having a smaller warhead, the effects on impact are devastating. Even more importantly, the BrahMos's ability to maintain supersonic speeds while scheming at low altitude makes it very difficult to detect and intercept. To cap it off, 
the Brahmos performs an evasive S maneuver shortly before impact, making it difficult to shoot down at close range. A modern ship targeted by the Brahmos could respond with layered defenses to shoot down the missiles, ripple fired medium, and short range anti aircraft missiles and close range CIWS. But an effective attack would involve firing multiple missiles in order to overwhelm these defensive countermeasures. If the attack is launched within 120 km of the target, it can scheme at very low altitude the entire way to the target. While missiles can be detected earlier if benefiting from a WAX aircraft, a ship would likely detect a sea scheming missile at range of only 30 km, affording the vessel only a 30 second time window to respond. One intriguing analysis argues that a U.S. Arleigh Burke class destroyer, with its layered air defenses, could not handle more 12 BrahMos missiles at once and that an entire carrier battle group would be saturated by more than 64. Of course, though India has some unpleasant memories of an encounter with a U.S. carrier group in the past, they probably have a different foe in mind. Multiple targets for multiple launchers, India has also developed the BrahMos A, designed to be launched from its Su-30 MKI strike fighters. Finding a ways to mount such a heavy missile on a fighter plane has taken years of work in the end, the Su-30 S had to be specially modified for the task. The first test flight was carried out in June this year. India has already requisitioned 200 BrahMos As, and plans to convert 40 Su-30 MKIs to carry them. This offers yet another flexible means to deliver the missiles close enough to their intended targets. Finally, there are ground-launched mobile autonomous launcher systems mounted on 12-wheeler trucks. These are organized in regiments of five launchers with over 100 missiles. India is deploying a fourth missile regiment to Arunachal Pradesh, reportedly at cost of over 4,300 crore, over $640 million. These are what have spooked the Chinese military, particularly since the new Block 3 missiles are designed to steep dive at 70 degree angles to hit targets on the rear slopes of mountains. This has obvious application against the heavily militarized Himalayan border with China. That India is pressing ahead with the development of even deadlier BrahMos variants. To begin with, some reports imply India tested in 2012 a version with a new satellite guidance system and a range of 500 kilometers. Some argue that even the regular BrahMos may be capable of going further than its claimed 290 kilometer range. India will also soon introduce the next generation BrahMos NG, which is smaller, only 3,000 pounds, faster, Mach 3.5, and stealthier smaller radar cross-section. It should be deployable from land, sea and air systems, including multiple missiles carried on fourth-generation fighters. Additionally, India will soon be testing a scramjet-powered hypersonic BrahMos-2 missile capable of zipping along at Mach 7. Needless to say, these would be even harder to detect and shoot down and afford defending ships just seconds to react. The U.S. military has only just begun development a hypersonic missile of its own. Russia, for its part, has appreciated the BrahMos's commercial success, but seems to have only limited intention of fielding it, it may potentially deploy the system to Gorshkov-class frigates. It has more capable Zircon missiles, believed to be the model for the BrahMos-2, in development and longer-range Onyx missiles already in service. Showdown over the Himalayas and the South China Sea? The BrahMos is a new game piece in India's tense relationship with China. Chinese troops invaded India's Himalayan border in a 1962 war that is still bitterly remembered in India. In the last decade, the Chinese border garrisons began to rapidly increase in size, leading to similar escalation on the Indian side. China's close relationship with India's historical enemy, Pakistan, and its development of military base in Gwadar, Pakistan seen as an attempt to encircle India are another source of tension. In the fall of 2014, Chinese President Xi Jinping visited India in order to improve relations. 
however, a group of Chinese border troops appeared to have disregarded the civilian leadership and launched an embarrassing, though fortunately nonviolent, standoff that cast a shadow on any progress made. The Brahmos cannot reach very far into Chinese. Although China is upset about the Brahmos missile's presence on its border, it probably should be more worried that India is announcing it is close to a deal for selling the weapon to Vietnam. Suffice to say, relations between China and Vietnam have a very long and complicated history, including a war in 1979. They recently have chilled over Chinese claims to the South China Sea. A particularly low point came with a Chinese oil expedition in 2014 that began drilling in Vietnamese claimed waters, causing violent protests and a naval confrontation. The Vietnamese Navy isn't going to match China's rapidly expanding flotilla anytime soon. But small Vietnamese ships with BrahMos missiles could pose a major threat to China's larger military vessel. Thus, if Vietnam does acquire the weapon, this would affect the balance of power in the Pacific. Therefore, India may attempt to cultivate an alliance with Vietnam in order to counterbalance China. Other countries interested in the BrahMos include Malaysia, Brazil, Chile, Venezuela, South Africa and Indonesia. Reading the cruise missile tea leaves, the politics of the BrahMos system also highlights the limited potential of a Chinese-Russian alliance. Russia historically has strong ties with both India and Vietnam. Its relationship with China has been more complicated, notice how that word keeps showing up. After an energy agreement in 2014, there has been much speculation of a Chinese-Russian alliance based on shared authoritarian ideology and a desire to counterbalance the United States. However, the sale of the BrahMos missile to India and Vietnam illustrates that while Russia wishes to remain on good terms with all three countries, it is not yet committed to an alliance with China the expense of its economic interests or its own concerns with its powerful neighbor. What can China do in response to the threat posed by the BrahMos missile? Simple. It can de-escalate the conflict with India. India is a democracy with all the messy internal political deliberations that implies it's not about to launch a massive surprise invasion of the Himalayas. A well-managed de-escalation wouldn't have to carry a huge political cost. The average Chinese citizen likely doesn't have strong feelings on the precise boundaries of the McMahon line. Disputes over lightly populated Himalayan mountains shouldn't constitute a truly substantive conflict of interest between the two countries but they have been allowed to flourish into full-blown military competition. It is obvious the two Asian powers are wary of each other. But both would be better served by reciprocated detente, allowing billions spent fortifying the border to be redirected to the economic needs of the two countries. Thanks for watching. I hope you like this news. Please share your views in comment box. Please like and share this video. Press subscribe button and bell for auto update to you regarding my channel world action and reaction news, warn.